So we're going to put on the hex suit. <clears throat> and then we're going to put on the ghillie suit. And we're going to go on up in the research area too. I'm going to set out two audio recorders. And, um... <coughs> come back up and pick them up on uh, Sunday. And why am I wearing a ghillie suit? Well, not to be Mr. Important or anything else like that. But um, I'm going to sit for a little bit. Relax. And quiet. For a little bit. The ghillie suit is warm. <laughs> it's very warm. I'm going to tell you that. Oh. So the hex suit blocks my electromagnetic signature so that's the theory but it breaks up my uh, breaks up my outline and uh, and it's warm <laughs> nobody should be up here hunting anything so it shouldn't blast me just kind of show you, I don't do this all the time, and I've messed around with, uh, and I'm going to continue doing it too, um, messed around with the face paints and stuff. Uh, you know, wasn't just so much as uh, trying to be incognito as much as it was, you know, wondering, you know, their face is really gray and dark i mean can i make myself kind of look i don't know if that's such a great idea or not but you know that was one of the aspects i had thought i mean will i look a little more natural with darker with a darker face and what you do is uh so this is this is the hood for uh the hex suit Tighten it up around my neck, that over my face, and then these are the gloves, and you got socks, pants, shirt, pretty much concealed just about all of my body, except for what you see on my face, and uh, this all, another glove. Alright, and then we'll put the headset on, and again, please don't think that I'm trying to show off. I don't do this all the time, but, um, you know, when it comes to other wildlife, I mean, not so much Sasquatch, I guess, so, you know, everybody's going with, they're so smart that this don't fake them out, but, I don't know, who knows? That's it right there. Yeah, there you go. All right, so I can see you. Can you see me? You put the rest of my stuff together, and uh, <clears throat> I'll take the headset off. <sighs> Throw my hat on. This is a hex hat as well. Okay, probably better put a link if I send you a video. <laughs> So I go up in like this, right? It's very, very warm. And uh, <clears throat> I'll go up, set the audio recorders, and then I'll just have a seat, find a quiet spot, listen to the owls, listen to the animals, and use my thermal. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm gonna try to show you what I'm gonna set up tonight, just to see if I can get some more recording time out of my recorder. Again, that's, it's, you know, it's a $100 recorder. It's not ideal 
I'm going to be buying some good long-term recorders. I have this, but I don't have the adapter to hook up to the battery yet. I have a laundry list of things that I need to get, but either way, this is what I'm doing right now. So, I'm going to, in case it rains, <clears throat> see that little piece of trapping wire there? It's about 24 inches long. Because when I set these recorders up there last time, I mean, one time I climbed up into a tree and I used my beanie hat <laughs> and put the recorder inside of that, which was soft and dark, and it worked pretty good. Actually, you could probably use my work hat right there. Probably be even better, but either way, um, I'm going to take that wire and I'm going to make a hook on one side, and then I'm going to hook it through the plastic. I'm going to use my old solar charger and a um i've got one set up right here if you look inside of there i've got a uh, cord i'm gonna plug into that which will then uh plug into the recorder and then i'll hang the whole works out of a tree you know i was concerned about that plastic and what the recordings would sound like but last time i set these out i put them up in a tree in a plastic ziploc bag and i didn't hear any problems with the sound quality at all so i know it's blurry but that's what i call gray wood swamp i'm not very far up in maybe i don't know three quarters of a mile to a mile from my truck That's wicked awesome. Look at that. I mean, it's dark out here, man. Yeah, I don't know. It's like... Oh, let's see, it was 10.38 when I left my truck. And it's... Uh, you know, I've been gone. Well, oh, hold on here. Let me check my audio recorder. Because I turned that on as soon as I left. 54 minutes since I left my truck. 10.38, 11.38. Careful, don't fall right down that swamp. And I don't have my glasses on either, so I'm thinking that probably looks a lot better than you get up a little higher. Isn't that something? I suppose seeing how I have the camera on, um, let's see what I can do here. This is the stuff I live for. I mean, it's just, it's always so fascinating out here. But, all right, I'll tell you what's going on. Out in front of me, I have a swamp. Uh, it's just right full of old dead cedar and spruce trees and they got a off to the can you see my hand so down this way i have an outlet one of them and there's a beaver dam to my left and that runs down to another flow <sighs> straight out that way probably about Oh, I don't know, a mile and a half, two miles as a crow flies is Lily Pond. And then out past those ponds out there is more trout ponds. <laughs> All right, I'll turn on my light and uh, I'm going to hang this recorder out of this tree. And that'll be that. So. Let's see what I can do here. And I'll uh, find a spot for this here. Hopefully you can see me, I don't know.
Let's set this one down here so you can see what I'm doing. We're in here now. Jeez. <laughs> oh, well, ain't like I can play around up here all night long anyway. I've taken my time coming up in here. I came up in real slow. And, uh, oh, good Lord. Oh, I came up in real slow and used my thermal quite a bit. Tell you what's going on here. Let's get this set up. Alright, so okay. So that's definitely gonna charge. And this is fully charged, and this is fully charged, and uh, So I, I ended up getting uh, seven hours and 10 minutes out of these recorders a week ago. I came up in on a Friday, uh, April 28th, set out the two recorders, came back up, picked them up on Sunday. I, I, I also, I was worried that the sound would be poor through the plastic. It wasn't. I mean, it sounded pretty good. I've been listening to the audio. But either way, we're going to turn this bad boy on. Okay. That's the one I... Recorder is this. Okay, recorder number one. I have my audio on my head going. I use that to pull the information off to put in my journal. So that's why you hear me saying things like that, so, right, so, plus, recording number two, okay, all right, Sasquatch Wizard at Arundex, it is Friday, May 5th, 2023, and it's approximately 11.40, 11.45 p.m., and I'm setting this recorder number one to Phillips DVT 4110. Up in front of uh, what I call Greywood Swamp. That's not bad. I'm gonna try to find my wire now. Oh, there, I just saw it. There it is. You gotta have, uh, you gotta have Adirondack trapper eyes in every spot. Old trapping wire in the ground. <laughs> not really. They could have just hung it on the screen. Loud, but the idea is that, that it can reach up and hook it on something like that. See how this works. <laughs>
Alright. Alright, so hopefully you can see that. As well, I, you know, I have. So I've been like all winter long telling myself I want to order up that stuff, but I've been so stingy with my money. Um, but uh, I gotta get the cord and a good battery, and then I'll be able to leave this. You know, it's got better microphones on it. And uh, way better on the spectrogram. Uh, better the microphone, better the recorder. Uh, uh, much better signature on the spectrogram. It's, uh, you know, I've been wanting to tell people that. Now that I've learned how to operate the spectrogram, um, don't do what I did. I mean, if that's what you can afford is a recorder of $100 or something or or a little more or a little less. Well, you know, get what you can get. But don't go blow two, three hundred dollars on two, three of these things. Get one good recorder with a good microphone. Um, it's, uh, it's the right thing to do. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the right thing to do. <laughs> You could probably have seen everything pretty good. Let's see. Oh, I got that. I had that hex suit on, and it won't allow my uh, me to focus. There we go. There. Okay. You know, turn up the exposure a little bit. Huh? Look at that. My sakes. Oh my boy, that's nice. Alright, so here we go. Alright, that's not bad. Pretty incognito. Not bad. I mean, you really have to be looking for it, right? Right on. Turn that exposure back up. And voila. God, isn't that something? Let's go set up the other recorder. I can't get over how well this camera can see at night. Somewhere around midnight, or guys, probably like, well, actually, well, you can't. And you know, we got a beautiful full moon, so you really don't need light to walk around the woods when you have full moon. I did, uh, I'll show you. I don't know if you can see that. You see that, uh, see here. Hmm? All right, turn the exposure back up. Okay. My point 
This is a hemlock tree right here. And there's a little branch that comes out and all this sap is running out of it. And I was uh, able to take a chunk of the little piece of branch that was coming out. It had this white stuff on it. And I set my jar up and I did a bacterial ooze test and I was finally successful and you'll see that in uh, Tree Breaks Decoded but I like to sit in this spot and listen I'm sure nobody's gonna want to watch a video for a half hour staring at that. 
myself personally, I be listening to them peepers and listen to all the different types of noise that they make. Try to figure out what they're saying to each other. So, something will happen. <laughs> You'll hear something start squealing. I'll get a rabbit or squirrel or something. Sometimes when you're near these flows, you'll hear everything come to life and fox or coyotes trying to get the baby ducks or something. All hell break loose for a little while and then quiet back down. You can't get over that phone. I just keep staring at it thinking, oh my god. can actually see what I'm seeing. Now I imagine you get this booger on photo and then get it on a tripod so it's very stabilized and then slow that shutter down. I'll bet you that I can get pictures of the stars with this we get back up on Bigfoot Mountain and uh, give that a whack, hey? Alright. I'm gonna put this other recorder out. Uh, well, I gotta tell you, I feel really bad that I haven't been able to put much of anything worth watching out. All of what I've got from 2020, 2021, 2022, and, and a good handful of very important stuff. And I don't like to half-ass anything. And I've been so busy with work. I had some time right around Christmas, but I had to help out the Camille's ballet instructor and do the video and, and editing for the show and then after that I got right to work on getting all of my footage organized and put into external hard drives and backed up here and there and I was hammering every single video skim through it real quick label it date it give it a name that i'd recognize so that i could pull out important information when anybody wanted to refer to something or if i had something that was relevant to things other folks are discovering and then I was working on that audio drop and walk out and I pretty much was done. And then I realized when I was looking into whether or not that loud percussion sound that I heard up here that night was a gunshot, small arms fire, or whatever it may have been. I knew that I, I couldn't just give you my best guess. Now I'll let you know that I spoke to a, a gentleman whom is a sheriff. He's interested in hearing the sound, and I asked, 
do you have anybody that might be able to shed some light on this? And I went on to explain that I had read a peer or peer reviewed paper on deciphering gunfire. I learned a lot from that, and I realized that I had to learn to operate, understand. and read a spectrogram, visually see sound, and I started to learn how to do that, and that took a lot of time. Then, about the time that I got good enough to where I had finally made the decision, well, I can't let the cat out of the bag. Yeah, I gotta skip that, sorry. I was given a very unique chance, and it was awesome. Another... Bigfoot investigation group had a piece of audio that was sent to me that has vocals that are similar, very similar to other recordings that have been analyzed on a spectrogram by individuals that a lot of the community knows, they match up and I went to work on it. And I worked, and I worked, and I got better at the spectrogram, and then I kept working on it, and I, I can't talk too much about it, it's not mine, I don't have permission to do so, and someday you folks will hear it or see it, I'm sure, but, uh, that willingly took a lot of time. Maybe you got Beaver out in front of us. And in the meantime, I was just working these jobs. And we had guys getting sick. We had guys getting frustrated and quitting. And if it wasn't one thing, it was another. I don't think I've had a day off in three months. <laughs> The only time I get off is if I use my sleep time to come up into the woods like this. <laughs> Alright, well. I wish I was better with words. I just want everybody to know. I worked harder this winter on my research into the subject of Sasquatch than I have ever worked. And I made a lot of, a, I, I gained a lot of ground in so many ways. And I wish I could just take a day and sit down and put any type of video together to share some information. But I just can't yet. And sure, I could have just gone home and did that tonight. But being here, sitting on the ground, walking around in the woods up here tonight is what I needed. So, the 
pretty slummy up here and it's quiet. It's just me. But I'll tell you one time, what was it, back in 2021? And I and I'll come across that audio. I think I actually already did. Boy did I learn a lot listening to all my audio. And here I am running my mouth. I told myself, man, dude, you gotta stop talking. Like, I just wanna smack myself right in the head. Like, just shut up. <laughs> and that friggin' hideous whistle. I'm glad I changed it to a morning dove kind of whistle, you know? And I try to do it ever so softly. Because it makes my it makes me cringe when I listen to my audio and then all of a sudden <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> oh shit. I'm tired. Alright. See ya. Alright. So we're putting out the last recorder. This is recorder number two, and um, it is uh, 12.46 a.m., now May 6th. Must be that recorder's messed up. No, is that? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Let's start a new one. And hit it. There we go. All right. So that's correct. It's May 6th, 2023, and it is now 12.52 a.m., so let's get this up, and uh, I gotta get going. I won't get home till 2.33 o'clock in the morning. I gotta be to work. Seven. So this one I'm able to put inside of this little sleeve so you can't see that light and then I'll put that over top of this but I don't have a dark sack like I put the other recorder out and used my uh, ghillie suit head to conceal it and hide it. I don't have that. So I'm going to put it in here. Zip it up.
good enough for government work. Okay, so uh, Sasquatch Wizard at Rundex, it is about 10 after 1 a.m. And I am uh, just got done setting out those two recorders. And uh, yeah, I'm just loving this phone. Um, this is pretty cool. So I'm going to leave my green light on and uh, you can take the walk out. Not very far, you know, maybe three-eighths of a mile maybe tops but uh yeah let's go <laughs> I just fell in the creek a few minutes ago you would have thought that was pretty funny if you saw that Jeez. Trying to get some still shots of that. God, that's amazing that that camera can pick that up. Jesus, I thought I lost my camera. When it fell in the crack. Shit. <laughs> tell you right now my eyes cannot see the other side of the swamp as well as that camera's picking that up that is amazing you know I gotta say though I uh, I was talking to my son oh, back when uh, Matt from Central Florida Bigfoot had 
introduced us to uh, the iPhone 13 Pro Max in the night mode, how well the night camera was. Well, <clears throat> my son, he has an Android. So, iPhone lovers, I'm sorry. But, unless somebody shows me something, I would say maybe twice, if not three times better than what you're looking at right now. I mean, he took me out in his backyard. It was pitch black. He put that on night mode, and I was looking at that, and I'm like, there's just no way. I'm like, your camera doesn't remember what's back there and is, like, filling in the pieces. He's like, no, that's it. And it was twice, if not three times better than what you're looking at right now. I just could not believe it. But either way, I mean, this is great. Look at that. Those beavers are just skittish little, you know, cute little beavers. You wouldn't think so if you were with me and my son up in Palmer Pond with them black powder musket guns. I don't know what that one's problem was, but he was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then the road, uh, they had dammed it up, so the water come right up this gravelly like road. And I'm like, it went under, and, and I'm like, oh shit, I don't see it anymore. And Dylan's like, dad, dad, there it is. That thing was right on the bottom and coming full steam ahead at us. <laughs> well, I don't know if I hit it or not, but I pulled up and there was nothing but a big explosion, lots of water splashing and smoke. From that black powder. I didn't want to hurt it. I really didn't want to, but it was coming so fast. And we were right there at the water's edge. That, uh, I, I know what kind of teeth they have. I've trapped them. You do not want to get bit by that beaver. <laughs> it breaks his leg. That rock came through. So, you see them pine trees up in there? All right, I was facing this way, finally. I was back here just a little further. Hold on. You get back where I was. Because it hit right over here at the swamp's edge. I would say... Like probably right about here. Yeah. And you see them pine trees and stuff up there. Yeah. All right. That rock came from up here. And I could hear it hitting stuff. And you know when a, like a rock the size of a maybe a golf ball hits the mud? I heard that. <laughs> and I could go on and on and on about this place. This is like a for deer, coyote. It's a crossing for small game, big game. And it's not very far from the truck at all. And that's what I was leading to. I thought a lot this winter about what went on just last year. And I don't know if you guys go back and... I don't know if I posted a video on that. I think I did. Um... There was a night that I ended up camping right there at the truck. I was using my parabolic, and um, I had a deer walk right out, like 15, 20 foot aside me, and walked right through the woods like it didn't even give a shit that I was even there. But aside of that, there was a time when 
Like, I caught this whiff of dog. Like, like my nose was six inches from a wet dog that just played in a beaver swamp. Muck. Um, and, like, it caught my attention. And I was like, whew. And then I heard something, like, snap on the other side of my truck. So I went around my finger. I went around my truck, around the front of my truck. And as soon as I got that thermal up, I could see something really low to the ground. And it went, doo -doo, like, fast. Imagine if that was a Sasquatch. <laughs> I mean, I say it was a dog because it smelled like a dog. And I was hearing coyotes that night. And they're running up and down the road all the time. There's plenty of them around here. Right over there, quarter of a mile that way. I was over there that one night. And I had those coyotes come across the backside of the swamp. They were running behind me. And that night, that night too, there was... I just listened to that audio this winter, and I was like, man, I'm so glad that I got that. There's so much of that. Good God. I should just take the whole entire year off from walling around the woods and getting more and just go back and start sharing what I have. There's some stuff recently that's come up uh, that there's uh, this these sounds that they are saying, these are new. Yeah, I have those. Very similar. And uh, I gotta go back and find them. But either way, I'm in no big hurry. Whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, right down there, I was coming this way. What was it? Uh, just before the turn of the year. It was 2020 in the winter. Maybe it was already 2021. I can't remember. But I had that, uh, oh, I bought it at Walmart, cheap little night vision camera, stealth cam. Um, and what else I have? I had the stealth cam, and I had that, pretty sure I had that thermal too, that cheaper one. But either way, I was coming right, right in there. And I'm telling you, say right there and you're talking we've got ice and crunchy snow and it is quiet like you could hear a mouse fart in the woods and right there i could hear three four steps like a 300 pound man crunch 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 and it stopped and i was like ready to shit myself and i've got that night vision up I can't see nothing it's black and white got a tiny little window to see, but I couldn't see nothing and that was it like it didn't go any further I'm waiting for it to move and I was just like what the hell so I finally I was just like well I'm just gonna keep moseying on up through here and I thought well if that was a Sasquatch how in the hell could that rock come from way in the hell and gone up here and then come at a trajectory like, like a meteor? I'm not kidding you. It was like you were in the woods and some dude yelled four and here it comes. All that happened right here. And that night with them coyotes, that's right. Jesus, I never finish what I'm saying. Lord forgive me, I didn't mean to say that. But... When I was, that night when those coyotes came out and I got them on camera over in there, all right, I'm standing there and I have my camera on a tripod and I have that uh, cheaper thermal, right? And number one, for whatever reason, I had powered that thermal up one hundred percent I know I did and I remember turning it on I didn't accidentally turn it on unless I had turned it on and then it shut off 
and then it turned back on again. I have no idea. But either way, when I needed it most, I looked down, and the, the, um, the light was either on red. Yeah, it was red. And I'm like, you're shitting me. Well, either way, you know, I mean, that's getting into the woo thing, but whatever, you know, I mean, what can I say? I'm just saying what happened. I'm not saying that something did it. I'm just saying it was awful stupid that I didn't have no power. Well, I'm there, and it's now getting to the point where it's so dark I can't see the other side of the swamp. It's, it's dark now, and... <clears throat> Right, like, five foot off to the side of me, in this, like, clump of like, cedar trees or whatever, like, very heavily bowed, 12, 14 feet tall, but very broad. That's what I was, was on my right, using that for kind of cover. And right at the base of that, sounded like a little, like a whimpering, like, little whimper like a dog puppy whimper or something I'm like at one point I kept hearing it and I didn't want to move because I was like oh my god what is this and then finally I was just like what is that in there because I kind of lost confidence that it had any size to it even though it sounded like a little puppy dog and uh I don't know what that was I don't know and then I remember after all that happened, I started walking out of there. And of course, I'm running my mouth like I always do because I can't shut up. And uh, on the audio recording, when I listened to that this winter, I kept rewinding. And I've, I've uh, well, T-mark, bookmark, whatever you want to call it, I... I have it bookmarked on the original SD card or internal storage, whichever one, but it's bookmarked, right? You can hear heavy movement in the woods. I was hoping, I remember listening, and I was like, oh my God, this is when I, um, coyotes came out. I'm going to hear myself go, hey, look at the, tell them, get the hell out of there. And then I thought, I wonder if I'll be able to hear that movement that caused me to say, well, hold on here. We, we've got stuff all around us. Shit's about ready to hit the fan here. And I mean, that got me, you know, like instant butterflies in the stomach. And, uh, <laughs> jeez, I don't know. And, and you know what? That same night when those big heavy footsteps and that meteor or rock or whatever the hell came down through the trees. That same night was the same night that I first learned how to stick my iPhone up to the back of that stealth cam. I walked up all the way to the first flow and then on my right, I walked over to the edge and I have, and I still have, like I... I think I took snapshots, I have the video, and all the, I'm telling you, it looks like a guy with an afro, with his leg and his arm wrapped around the tree, and he's like hugging the tree, and I, I'm sure, I went back there, I, I've gone back there, I went, I remember I walked across the ice, and i Look from every spot that I could possibly think exactly where I was standing, and I could not find anything that would resemble what it is that I saw in that picture. But it's blurry. <laughs> oh well, what the hell? Look at that camera. Isn't that something? I can't even see that good. All right, well. You'll never see this one. You need to learn to shut up. <laughs> Put duct tape over my mouth. Time to go home. Take care. Thanks for watching.